In the name of the one true God, I demand you give me my rightful place, admit the significance of my challenge, and admit that your philosophies are inferior, and that's why you resorted to cheating and drugging. Though I must say, I don't expect you people to do the right thing with or without God's inspiration because you are that shallow and spiritually insignificant. You don't understand hope, love, the true meaning of wisdom. Sophia and Lilith, you Blavatsky garbage, <laughs> does not count. The true meaning of considerate and wise. The true meaning of nature and grace perfecting nature. What passes for reason and intellect is disgraceful. Revelation 22. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. So he says, I am the root of this great warrior who proved it through spiritual prowess. And I am the offspring of this great warrior who proved it through spiritual prowess. He chose David in Revelation 22. The significance there, I'm sure they will downplay because they are jealous pussies like Cain was, like Lilith, right? If you believe their narrative of it. And going back to the tree of life, the apple was a symbol of materialism, right? Knowledge of the material world. And what did God do? He gave the material to cover their body because now they had a material perspective which included lusting for flesh and judging, uh, you know, people, you know, based on that and not the spiritual path that forged their body, for instance. <clears throat> whether it made them sickly and old in a cave, you know, or a great warrior such as myself, you know. Our bodies are partially a result of our philosophy and our spiritual path, right? So if you lust for it for the wrong reasons, you know, you say, I lust for this big bodybuilder guy who put all this into the flesh and not spirit, you're an idiot. You know, a woman should desire the martial artist, thin kind of African Bruce Lee kind of build and not this big kind of knucklehead fool, you know. I don't think I need to explain that. So in Revelation, you also have the water flowing down from God, from the Lamb, the tree of life, uh, to the leaves, right? There's this natural order, you know, that is stressed. And the philosophy is what allows for the truth to flow down. And the Luciferians are going to play stupid about that and their weak interpretation of the Bible uh, and, you know, other philosophies and religious texts that are similar to it. Revelation 22, 12. I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done, okay? To what they have done from this perspective, right? Not a Luciferian perspective. So then again, you know, there you have the social order, right? If you truly believe as, below, as above, so below, then the person with the great spiritual prowess who went on a divine mission, you know, someone like me, is obviously above all these social norm-pushing, sniveling cowards, you know, who love money, and we'll get to that in a moment. Genesis 1, the Spirit of God hovering over the water. Okay? So we have the Spirit separate, you know. And we have the greater light and the lesser light. So the sun and the moon, you know. Genesis 1, 16. God made the two great spirits, the greater light to govern the day, and the lesser light to govern the light. So there's two great lights. And right there, you know, you see the sun valued over the moon. And you can imagine the moon temple pagan bitches, you know, aren't a big fan of uh, that truth. Genesis 3, you know, they talk about touching it, right? Genesis 3, 3. But God did say, you may not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden. And you must not touch it or you will die. Okay, so you can't eat the fruit that's in the middle, right? Don't meet these bitches halfway. Watch out for those middle guys. Meet us halfway type of bitches, right? And uh, don't touch it, right? Don't be all materialistic about it. And oh, don't go down that materialistic path to seek wisdom, you know, and then let that determine who you reproduce with, you know, choosing these sniveling dogs, you know, whose job is to perhaps point out things. But ultimately, it is for the spiritual order, the natural spiritual order to decipher um, the message of God. You know, scientists and learned men can give their advice, 
you know, just like you have the, the, the wise men who follow the star, right? You know, are they going to tell Jesus what to think just because they're wise men, you know, or is it the person chosen by God, right? The prophets, are they the, automatically the smartest men of their society? What was part of Moses' insecurity? He was like, Aaron's a better public speaker. Why me? Am I really the man for the job, right? He felt these insecurities, you know, but in reality, it's part of that Luciferian perception that made him feel that way in the first place. It's who God chooses and understanding how he selects people spiritually uh, that makes you realize why these Luciferian ninnies are wrong, most of all, perhaps. Uh, okay. And of course, we have Cain going east of Eden, right? Where's Africa in location to whether you put the Garden of Eden in the middle of the east, east or in Africa, right? What is east of Eden? They talk about the Tigers and the Euphrates and these bodies of water, right? So, you know, that kind of destroys this kind of idea that <clears throat> the blacks are the children of Cain. Gays, feminists, violent people. For this part of the video, we're going to talk about that. Okay, Timothy is not liked. You know, Paul is not liked by the New Age ninnies. Uh, and some argue that they don't know who wrote these things in the first place. But either way, they don't like whoever wrote Timothy. First Timothy 1. Uh, 10. For the sexually immoral, for those practicing homosexuality, for slave traders. Stop right there. But I thought Christianity was used to justify the slave trade, Michael. I thought Christianity. Isn't it funny how it's the same people, you know, that are, uh, they don't like Paul's Timothy, right? More than anything in the Bible, perhaps, who are arguing that Christianity was used to justify the slave trade when right here in Timothy it says slave traders are bad people, basically. It says for the sexually immoral, for those practicing homosexuality, for slave traders and liars and perjurers and for anything else that is contrary to sound doctrine. Okay? So it say, look, this is contrary to sound doctrine. You know, they have no argument with that. Oh, it was used to justify. It's like, look, you know, what you're, you use nonsense to justify. You use stuff that is good to justify your evil as well. You know, liberals are using real problems in society to justify their evil. That doesn't mean there's not those real problems. You know, their logic is so despicable, so appalling, so repugnant. It's just, wow. You people really are just, just subhuman filth when you look at it spiritually. Christianity is meant to be a religion where you have a personal relationship with God and you go to the church for guidance, right? 1 Timothy 2.5 For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus. And in 1 Timothy 3, when it talks about the requirements for being an overseer or a deacon, it says that they should not be given to drunkenness, not violent, but gentle. You know, not quarrelsome, not a lover of money, you know, so this is a very obvious uh, connection to, you know, martial arts uh, applications and competitions where it says, if you're a Christian, you're not supposed to be violent, you know, to the point where the perfect example of a Christian, you know, is someone who's not violent. So if you have a system that teaches Christians, it shouldn't teach them, you know, to apply senseless violence rather to defend themselves, you know, and to uh, learn um, things that, that are consistent with sacred morality. 1 Timothy 3.16 He appeared in the flesh and was vindicated by the Spirit. So it was the Spirit that vindicated him and deacons aren't supposed to be violent. Christians aren't supposed to participate in senseless violence. You can see where I'm going with this.